as we light the first Advent candle, we enter a season of surprises, of not yet knowns, a time of possibilities, a time of hope. We see throughout the Bible that God has a surprising preference for people who are small and humble and who are expecting everything from him. One such person is Mary, the unassuming virgin from Nazareth. God chose her to become the mother of his son, Jesus. We read in Luke 1, 30-33, the angel told her, Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will become pregnant, give birth to a son, and name him Jesus. He will be a great man, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. Your son will be king of Jacob's people forever, and his kingdom will never end. Let's pray. Father, thank you for Mary's humble submission to the costly task you ask of her. Make me as willing to do your will as she was. Help me to understand servanthood as well as Mary did. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Merry Christmas! Thanks for not blasting our ears with that. Well, welcome everyone. Again, I wanted to hop up here real quick. It is my honor and my privilege to let you guys know that today kicks off Advent season. And as well as that, uh, Pastor Greg Mason is joining us. Pastor Greg uh, was a DS. And before that, he was a pastor for 26 years. He planted several churches. So he's got a lot of experience all the way around. I hear he's a big sports fan. Just so you know, I double checked. He is Ohio State's fan, not Michigan. So I think he's mourning the loss today with the rest of you. So with that, if you would, just help me welcome Greg Mason. Well, thank you, thank you. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. amen. If you're disappointed, Ohio State fan, say oh my. Oh my. That was awful. <laughs> I... Um, I was driving back from uh, Illinois where we were with our family for uh, Thanksgiving and I uh, had the, uh, the Fox broadcast on on my phone. Obviously, I wasn't watching it because I was driving. And uh, it just, the, the ride started out pretty good. By the time we got home, I was mad at my wife, my kids, <laughs> everybody in Buckeye land, but we'll, we'll survive. Okay, we'll survive. Well, what an honor it is uh, for me to, uh, to be here and uh, to be helping out, I hope, over the next uh, few weeks and um, maybe months, we'll see, but uh, uh, I'm honored to, to come and share in the ministry of this church as uh, we continue to seek uh, leadership, uh, senior leadership uh, for the church during these days. I have such great respect for this church and for uh, the work that uh, Bill and Mary uh, Walker uh, did over these years, by the help of God, obviously, uh, to, to uh, bring this church to where it is. I have great respect for your district superintendent who is working with the church board to, uh, to find the next pastor. I did that for 16-plus uh, years, helping churches uh, find uh, God's uh, man or woman uh, for leadership in local churches. And then uh, I have, uh, have great respect for Doug Boquist, who's been serving as your interim pastor uh, for these last uh, few months, many months. And uh, Doug, uh, Doug and I went to college together and uh, love him and appreciate him. Uh, but I'm honored. I, uh, I kind of semi-retired uh, from the district superintendency um, uh, officially in July, and um, and moved back home after being gone for 45 years. We moved back to Springfield. Don't ask me why. It we, it, we just did, and uh, from North Carolina of all places. And uh, but I wanted to keep preaching, keep serving as I could, and um, and so I've partnered with the district here to serve as what we're calling pastoral associate. So over the last few months, three, four months, I've preached in 14 different churches, a different church every Sunday. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to just kind of being planted in one place, and uh, I'm here to serve. I'm here to, uh, to help the board, 
any way I can. I've met with them once uh, to help the staff. You have a wonderful staff, an incredible staff. And I've been able to meet with them a couple of times and will continue to do so. In fact, would you just help me thank and and, uh, show appreciation to Pastor uh, Jessica and Tom and so many of the others, all of the others who are serving you during this time. Would you just, they're doing a great job. And uh, I I sat in with them the other day and I I just wanted to say, hey folks, you're wearing me out just, uh, just listening to you. They're working so hard. And uh, so I'll be here most Sundays. Uh, I did kind of retire to see grandkids. And so, um, you know, every once in a while, uh, I'll be gone to, to do something with them. But uh, looking forward to, to serving with you. And, and let's, just, let's just determine together, this is your church, uh, let's just determine together that we're going to do the best we can. We're going to we're going to serve together. We're going to, all of you are going to uh, do whatever you can to, to help the church continue to thrive and to make a difference in uh, this regional area. So, uh, so just thanks for letting me uh, be a part of this. I'd like for you to take your Bibles, please, and, uh, and turn with me um, to, to Luke, the Gospel of Luke, and uh, we're going to going to look at Mary and the beginning of this whole Christmas story on this first Sunday uh, of Advent. I'd like uh, to just draw your attention, uh, and I'll, I'll be referring to a lot of verses in this first chapter, but I'd like to just draw your attention at the beginning of verse 26, Luke chapter 1, verse 26. It says, in the beginning... Or, or in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. And then if you drop down to the 42nd verse, Luke 1, 42, in a loud voice, she exclaimed, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Father, help us to preach better than we know how. More importantly, Lord, open our hearts and our ears to hear what you would say to the church on this very first weekend of Advent. And we'll give you thanks, for you are faithful in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. I I don't want to uh, get off on a bad foot tonight, and I don't want to offend anybody. Uh, But uh, a few years back, I was um, just kind of scanning through the stations with the remote. And I came across this uh, <laughs> this TV show, and I could not believe my eyes nor my ears. <laughs> the title of the show was, I Didn't Even Know I Was Pregnant. Have you seen it? <laughs> I, you know, when you, when you see that or you hear that, you got to you got to linger a moment. And, and, uh, and I ascertained that what, what the show was about, and evidently it didn't last long. I, I can't imagine how often this happens, that you could create very many episodes. But, the, but the, um, the, the, the premise of the show was there were women who would find themselves uh, in the hospital and discover... At the at the point of delivery, <laughs> that they were going to have a baby, and and they didn't know it. Surprise! <laughs> I, I can't I can't imagine how you would uh, how you would respond to that kind of news. I, I I don't well I guess I could watch the show, but I decided 
I didn't need to see that. (laughs) And I didn't watch much longer after that. These ladies were stunned to find out they were with child. (laughs) You know, uh, we think about that. Christmas is full of surprises. Uh, that's, That's part of the the attraction of Christmas is that somewhere along the line, we're going, to, we're going to receive a surprise. And uh, sometimes it's, it's not exactly what we think it is, but, uh, but, but we're going to wrap some things up and cover them up and, and open them up for the surprise. We, uh, we, had all, we have three kids and uh, nine grandkids, and uh, we were together under one roof at our son's house in Illinois this uh, weekend, and uh, we kind of had our family Christmas, and we'll travel to each of them individually with with our stuff, and and so we made arrangements. This is this is how much influence we have. We made arrangements for Santa Claus to come to the house last night. And the kids were just amazed and surprised. And he had a little gift for, for each of them, and, and they opened them up, and it was, it was a great surprise. And do you know there was a time when Christmas itself was a surprise? There were, now, that doesn't happen much these days. I mean, you know, as soon as Fourth of July is over, trees go up and shelves are packed and you start getting all kinds of mail and notices, and, and Black Friday doesn't even start the day after Thanksgiving anymore. It starts in September sometime. It's not much a surprise these days, but it was back then. When Mary was told that she was going to have a child, it was unexpected. In fact, we, I like to say, she found out she was expecting the unexpected. The Bible had been silent for 400 years. No prophets, no scriptures, no voices from heaven. When Jesus was born, Israel was not expecting him. When God spoke to Zechariah about Elizabeth having a baby, it was an absolute shock. The shepherds were not expecting to hear from the angels. Joseph wasn't expecting to be a father. Wise men were not expecting a star. And Mary was not expecting to be expecting. Christmas may not be a surprise to us, but it was to her. She was a young girl, barely a teenager. She had a boyfriend, a fiancé. But out of spiritual and social decorum and faithfulness to God, they had not been intimate. Surprise, Mary. You're going to have a baby. We speculate about how we would respond if we were in her place. We, uh, we don't know. How, how would anybody respond in that situation? I, I, I think we, we speculate about how others would respond. What, what if others hear this news about me? Shocking news. Well, whenever we have that kind of surprise, that kind of shocking news, that, that's not always great news, we tend to fear. We, we tend to, to fear the unexpected. We often panic in the face of the unknown. Yet we live in a world where life surprises us over and over and over again. Life kind of drops in on us. Some would say it crashes in on us. And and when that happens, our tendency is to point fingers, to play the blame game, 
to count what, what's this going to cost me. We evaluate the consequences. We ask lots of questions. And you would expect Mary to do, to do all of that. Let me just tell you this tonight. Some of those surprises, God is the instigator. Some, sometimes God is the culprit in our surprises. Because God often interrupts, often confronts, often challenges our comfort zones. He questions our presuppositions. He he is the God of all things new. And the Bible is full of illustrations, hundreds of them, maybe thousands, of God's ministry of surprise. You've You've experienced that. So let me be careful to say to you tonight that when we get surprised, God may be behind it. He will definitely use it. So often in the midst of our questions and the blaming and the fear, if we're not careful, we will miss what God wants to do in us and what he wants to do for us. We, uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, we love to watch our grandkids open their presents, especially when it is a, a great surprise. Watch this, uh, this little video, I, I hope we have it, of one of my grandkids. Whoop, no video. Well, here, let me explain it to you. My uh, look, my grandson, he'll be eight in a couple of weeks, in the green pajamas. He uh, He's four in this uh, picture. And uh, behind that black uh, tarp is a drum set, a full drum set. And he could play it. Now, I, I wish you could see the video because he, he just kind of jumps up there and plays it. And... Uh, and, but, he, but, but the reason I wanted to show it to you is because he's so excited and he says, my own drum set, my own drum set. Oh, thank you, thank you, my own drum set, my own drum set. It was one of the great surprises. It surprised me. One of the great things. Well, you know, you, you, you've, you've, you've been through that. You've experienced that with your kids or grandkids. But not all surprises are created equal. Because we watch, and I, I'm the fun grandpa. I buy all the toys. My, my wife is more practical. She buys all the pajamas and the underwear and the clothes and the socks. Bless her dear heart. She, she's doing what she thinks is best for these kids. But when the kids open them and see the surprise, <laughs> Superman underwear. (laughs) You know what they often do? (laughs) Get rid of it. Get on to the next one. But but there's some they open, man. I mean, when he opened that, he wanted to play the drums right away, and he did. They want to they want to get the set out and and open it up, and and grandparents and parents will say, "Wait a minute, you got other other things to open." You got socks coming up, you know. <laughs> keep, keep open. <laughs> Christmas is full of surprises. Life is full of surprises. But not all of them are happy surprises. I love Mary's response to her surprise. I I love Mary's response to what the Lord is saying to her through the angel, what's about to happen in her life when when all of the other emotions and all of the other questions uh, had to flood her mind, had to flood her heart, had to flood her person. Her response is glorious. I, I would simply say to you tonight, that in this surprise, expecting the unexpected, Mary 
has the, has the wherewithal to find hope. To find hope. We need to pay attention to Mary and what she says and what she does and how she responds so that when we are faced with surprise, whether it's a great surprise like a drum set or maybe not so great, we might find, like she did, hope. Now, it's all wrapped up in this verse, verse 28. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. And then again, blessed are you among women. Let me just share with you very quickly three things. One is that Mary found hope in Revelation. In Revelation. What's that mean? She heard the words, the Lord is with you. This unexpected expecting, this surprise, is a revelation of God. What, what Mary is going to experience, what she is going to learn more about, what she is going to process during this pregnancy is God himself. God. It's not just a baby. It's God. The the scripture says he will be great and will be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Further he says the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. I, uh, I, I think it would be good for us to know that in whatever surprise there is, when life just kind of falls on you, God is going to reveal himself to you. I I, I know the temptation is when something happens, especially a bad surprise, the temptation is to say, where is God? And, and, And the Israelites have been saying that for 400 years. Where is God? And God's response is to send his own son in the form of a baby in human flesh, in the body of a virgin teenager. I am here. The Lord is here. He he is one who comes to us, and he comes to us so that we might experience his presence. In fact, the nature of God, the presence of God, the picture of God is all wrapped up in this this little baby. In the Gospel of John, Jesus himself will say things like, I speak what God speaks. I do what God does. I come to do the Father's will. I do nothing on my own. I come to bring him glory. When you have seen me, you have seen him. If you believe in me, you believe also in my Father, God. God makes himself known to us. I, I am with you. I, I am, I am with you. I, Emmanuel, the name of Jesus, Emmanuel. He'll be called Emmanuel. What's that mean? God is with us. What, uh, what surprise has confronted you lately? Has it been a bad lab report or job loss? or a troubled marriage, a new baby. God is in that surprise. And in the surprise, he will teach you about himself. The second thing that I find here is that Mary found hope in the grace of God in this story. 
the angel called her highly favored one. You may know what grace is. Grace is an unmerited favor or unmerited concern and love of God. It's undeserved. When he says, highly favored one, Mary knows she has earned this opportunity to give birth to the Son of God. But it is by grace. You see, the grace of God is his decision to love us no matter what. And can I say this? To even like us. (laughs) God decides by his grace to love you. You know, surprises come. Sometimes we bring them on ourselves. Amen. Sometimes other people do things that cause us pain or difficulty or to question, where is God and what does he think of me? I'm here to tell you, Mary could have asked all of those questions. Why me? What did I do? I haven't even been with Joseph, and now I'm praying. What is everybody going to say? And the angel says, God has graced you. He likes you. He loves you. He he favors you. My favorite uh, New, New Testament passage is what we call the Magnificent. It's Mary's song. You know, she says, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. I don't know you very well. I look forward to getting to know you. But let me just say this. Whoever you are, whatever's happening in your life, grace, the grace of God, is God's decision to forgive us, to fill us, and to transform us. God, uh, the devil wants us to think that in every surprise, God is judging us, wanting to make us miserable, wanting to hurt us. He tries to put fear and dread into us. But we need to just kind of look at the old devil and say, look, God favors me, and he loves me, and he forgives me, and he likes me, and he fills me, and he transforms me. I want to tell you, in this world of division and disappointment and defeat and destruction and hatred, I find great hope in the fact that God is on my side. Amen. Amen. The third thing, Mary found hope in the blessing of the Lord, in the blessing of the Lord. I don't have time to describe to you the difference between grace and blessing, but the Lord does say to her, blessed are you among women. And I think sometimes the hardest thing to find in most unexpected difficulties or unplanned opportunities is the blessing. We, uh, we may not understand it until we face Jesus, see Jesus face to face. But the God who is with us, revelation, and the God who is for us, grace, is a God who will bless us. He, he will bless us. We just came through a week. A few days ago, we just gathered with our families and our friends. And what did we do? We counted our blessings. We know that God blesses. 
No matter what we've been through, most of us can say, I may, I should, should be all of us can say, I, I've been through difficult waters, I've been through difficult times, but God has been with me and he has blessed me. Sometimes the blessing is strength and sometimes it is peace and sometimes it is comfort and sometimes it is hope. Mary seems to know what I'm talking about. She says... He has shown strength in his arm. He has scattered the proud. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. Christmas doesn't sneak up on us these days. We know far in advance that it's just around the corner. We know how many sleeps there are until Santa comes. We know how many paychecks we're going to get between now and the time we have to pay the bill. We we know how many days we have left to shop. It really doesn't surprise us. But when you're faced with surprise, don't rush through it. Don't toss it away like a pair of underwear or socks. But try to sense and to know and to experience the God who is in it and the God who is for you and the God who somewhere along the line has a blessing. I uh, was driving down the road one time and thinking about Christmas, thinking about hope, and I... uh, I, uh, and if the worship team wants to come up, because I'm, I'm skipping the, I'm skipping the queue where I told them to come up. I was driving down the road, and I do this often, where I'll say to my wife, "We keep notepad in our car." I'll say, "Write this down." And here's what I had to write that day: an old, the words of an old song. You may have to be my age to even know the song. It was the last verse of a song called Through It All. It goes like this. I thank God for the mountain, and I thank him for the valleys. I thank him for the storms he brought me through. For if I'd never had a problem, I wouldn't know God could solve them. I'd never know what faith or hope in God could do. You know the chorus, some of you, through it all. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. Surprises come. They'll keep coming. But in the surprise, there is a God who wants you to know him. And there's a God who wants to be on your side, who's rooting for you. And there's a God who wants to bless you. And he will.
serve a God who wants to give us hope. He does not want us to be hopeless. He doesn't want us to be helpless. He's on our side. Amen. Go in the peace and the hope of the Lord. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. We're glad you're here today. God bless you.